Hey, Bridgepoint. Welcome to Midweek. My name's Michael. I'm Tyrone Campus Pastor, and it's a joy to be with you guys this evening. It's always a joy to be with you, even if we can't be in person. And I'm so thankful for our staff. I'm so thankful for those who are spending so much time to help get this content out to you guys. In fact, just last week, we spent eight days together from Palm Sunday through Easter, every day walking through the story of Jesus. And so, It is so awesome to be able to continue that tonight, the Wednesday after Easter. And you're going to have a special time tonight, and I'm so encouraged because we're going to have a time to be able to hear from our worship team, for them to be able to lead us wherever we're watching from, whatever you're watching on. I encourage you to just spend some time with God as they sing those songs. Spend some time reflecting on Him. And then you're also going to hear from our Clearwater campus pastor, Scott, and then Melanie, who oversees all of our outreach. They're going to be telling you a few of the stories of how God is moving in this time and invite you to continue to be a part of it. Or maybe you haven't yet, we would love for you to join. In fact, there's a few things that you can do for us right now. Number one is there's a chat area on your screen. Why don't you say hello? Why don't you maybe share a little bit of what God's doing in your life right now? Another thing you can do is if you have any prayer requests or anything, we're standing by. We would love to pray with you. Just click the button so that we can pray with you. You know, I read in God's word and he tells us to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. But he also says to love our neighbor as ourself. And I've been challenged in this time to be a good neighbor, to love my neighbor. And so what we would love to even hear are what are the creative ways in which you guys are reaching out to your neighbors? What are the creative ways that you're loving on the people around you? Because that's really being the church. We've learned in this time that the church is not a building. The church is the people. You're the church. I'm the church, and we need to continue to reach out in our communities, wherever we are, to help others know and find the love and hope of Jesus. And so I'm so encouraged that you're going to hear from these guys tonight, from Scott and from Melanie, and how God's working in our church. And hopefully that'll spark creativity in us to continue to reach out and love our neighbors. Lastly, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all of you that have been faithful in continuing to invest in our church in this time. You see, we have a lot of people that are in need, but the more we have, the more we're able to help. In fact, we just recently added a benevolence line to our giving. So if you go online and you want to give specifically to bless others, then you can give and give that towards the benevolence. We would love for you to do that so that we can continue to bless our community and help those that are hurting and are in need. So maybe tonight you just want to share where you are. Maybe tonight you want to share how God's moving in your life. Maybe tonight you want to share how you're going to love your neighbors. But no matter what, I am so encouraged of the opportunity that we have tonight to worship together, to lean into Jesus, to listen to him, and to hear how we are a part of the church, the body of Christ, not the building, but the people. Let's worship together. Here we go. I spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind Ninety-nine 
I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie, you won't tear down coming after me. There's no shadow you won't.
Hey, my name is Scott Davis. I get the privilege of being the campus pastor at the brand new Clearwater campus for Bridgepoint Church. And my name is Melanie Benner. I'm the missions coordinator here at Bridgepoint. And we just wanted to gather with you guys to share a little bit about what we've been getting to see God do both through our community and through our church. Um, I get to the privilege of overseeing lots of volunteers that get to go out into the community and share um, the love of God through that. And we've gotten to be a part of some really cool projects. We've um, built and created face masks for those on the front line of COVID-19 right now. Um, we also got to partner with a local restaurant, Urban Brew and Barbecue, as they delivered Easter meals all over the, the county, I think. Um, they were partnering with different community agencies, partners that we referred them to, and also um, some of our Bridgepoint volunteers got to help deliver those. So it was a really awesome way that we could get to give back. Um, we've seen a lot of people willing and wanting to give back during this time. Um, so it's been really neat to see them step up in that way. And I know, Scott, you and your team have really done a lot and gotten to be a part of really cool things that way too. Yeah, we did. Um, so w we just threw out a message to our team of about 50 volunteers on our serve team and just asked for ideas really of how we could get involved in the community. And they just really started giving us a lot of information, a lot of ideas, and they just ran with it. And some of those things were, uh, like Melanie said, making these cloth face masks for the healthcare professionals in our community at Morton Plant Hospital in Clearwater. 
And also, uh, they not only did that, they made some signs or had some signs made to stand outside the hospital at shift change uh, for the nurses and the doctors as they come and go at six in the morning and six at night and just stand there and thank them for uh, what they're doing and serving in the hospital and doing, they're doing their job. But we wanted to tell them thank you. Thank you for doing that because I know it's a stressful time for them. And that's been very impactful for the hospital and for their staff. And uh, some more people on our team made gift bags for every nurse on the COVID floor at Morton Plant Hospital and the emergency department. And that was huge for them as well. Um, and then we also have a team that gathered groceries and supplies, uh, the much sought after toilet paper and all those supplies that people are looking for and donated a whole week's worth of stuff to a single mother's ministry in uh, Bel Air Bluffs, uh, Shepherd's Village. And there's just so many things, Melanie, that, that our team is jumping in and doing. And I couldn't be more proud of them uh, because they're no more like Jesus than when they, they serve. And they're getting that opportunity through all of these different things. And I'm sure I'm forgetting some of them. They're, they're doing so much right now. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's been really neat to see campuses and just individuals within Bridgepoint really want to be a part of what God is doing. Um, we believe, and they obviously believe, that there's nothing that we can do that would be short of reaching people for Jesus. God has called us to be light in this community and be light, especially during hard times. Um, and so we believe that there's something for everybody to do. And we have actually been creating um, different opportunities for you guys to get involved. And so if you look on the chat right now, there's a button that says serve our community. If you push that, it'll take you to a web page on the website right now that'll tell you some of those service opportunities that you can get involved with currently and it'll be up to date as we add some more opportunities to that so we're super excited for just how we get to continue to um, get involved if you're not currently involved that's ways to get plugged in um, and jump in right now so Scott you want to yeah, share some more? I mean and to me that that brings me it always makes me think about why we do what we do i mean yes it does make us feel good to serve and there's a reason behind that though and the impact that it's made in the community is big i'm not taking away from that it is big but the impact i want to talk about is what's doing to uh the people who are serving in their hearts it's just amazing to watch them become the hands and feet of jesus and that's why well, I wanted to talk about that for just a minute because it takes me back to a story in the Gospels. Um, we just celebrated Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, on last Sunday. And just before Jesus went to the cross, he was reclining at a table, having a Passover meal with his disciples. It's a very uh, well-known meal that we talk about now called the Lord's Supper. And right in the middle of all of that, there, this dispute breaks out. And in, in the book of Luke, chapter 22, it tells us about this. And around verse 24, it says that this dispute broke out among the disciples as to who would be the greatest among them. And when I read that, I just thought it, it just had to break Jesus' heart, I think, when he saw this. He spent three years with these men teaching them. They heard his teachings and saw his miracles and thought he thought they knew what that was all about. And here they are talking about wanting to be great. And so I think in that moment is when Jesus stood up from the table and he took his robe off and wrapped his waist with a towel and actually got on the floor, on the ground and poured water to a basin. And in John chapter 13, you can read this account later. You can read about this. He actually begins to wash their feet. And if you know anything about culture in that day, uh, the mo major mode of transportation was feet. People walked most places they went. And so it was, as far as servanthood goes in that day and time, the person who would wash your feet as you traveled and came into a home was the lowest on the list of servanthood. And so Jesus is thinking, let me just demonstrate this so they won't forget it. Because he knew he was about to go to the cross and give his life for all mankind, past, present, and future, forever and ever. And so now here's our Savior. 
And we know the rest of the story, right? So we know he's the Savior. In the story, we look at him, humble himself to this act of selfless servanthood. And he shows the disciples this. And as he comes up, this is kind of intriguing to me as well, Melanie. He comes up to Peter and he says, Peter goes, Lord, you can't wash my feet, not, not me. And he said, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you can have no part of me or what I'm doing. And then Peter kind of freaks out and he says, well, don't just wash my feet, wash my hands and my head. It's almost like shampoo and body wash, the whole thing. And Jesus said, it's not like that. You need to become a servant and this, this, you just need your feet washed. And so to be great, in the end of that chapter, or in the end of that section of the chapter, around verse 13, I think, he says, look, I'm setting the example for you now. So remember this. You don't understand what I'm doing right now, but you will. You're going to remember this. If you want to be great, become the servant of all. That's what makes you great is you, get, you become great through the serving. And so... To me, the greatest thing about this is you may be sitting at home tonight thinking, well, what can I do? I can't go here. I can't do that. I can't do, necessarily do the things you're talking about, Scott and Melanie, but we want you to know that you can do something to serve. You can be like Jesus, and there's a lot a lot more things coming out. Melanie referenced that as we're going to be uh, bringing more things to you online, so keep up with us on our website on social media. But there are ways that you can serve and be just like Jesus in this time. You may be thinking at home, well, what can I do? If you want to get involved in some of the things I've already mentioned, feel free to, to hit the chat or uh, Melanie's going to cover some more of that about how you can be involved. But um, there's a, a lot of ways. But just remember this, that it's not about becoming great. That's just what happens. <laughs> Jesus said, remember, I'm setting the example for you. Mm -hmm. So just as I have done for you, now do for each other. And so what a great time for the church and as Bridgepoint Church, I, I love, that's one of the things I love about our church, Melanie, is that it's so service oriented. And so we want to show the world Jesus today. And the best way to do that is to love people and bring people, all people, closer to God through serving them and in many different kinds of ways. So if you have a way that you're serving, let us know. We may not know about that yet. We'd love to add it to our list too. So contact us, put it in the chat. But just serve and be like Jesus. This is a great time to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen so many people already get to do that, and we would love for you guys to jump in. Um, but, Scott, I would love to pray for us. That's great. I'd love that. And just end on that. So, dear God, we just thank you so much. Um, we thank you for today and for the breath of life that you give each of us so that we can go into the world and be your light. Um God, we, we know that you're working. You're in the midst of all the crazy and the chaos. Um, and God, we're just so glad and thankful that you've called us to be a part of spreading that light and spreading that love um, to our community and our world. Um, and so God, I just pray that as we continue on with our days, Lord, that we can look inside and see um, how you're working in us and how you're calling us to live your commandment, Lord, to love and serve others. So um, God, just continue to bless what we're doing um, as we're just being obedient to you. Um, we thank you. We love you. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Amen. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to join us on Sundays, every Sunday online at bridgepointfl.com slash live at 9 a.m., 10.30, 12 noon, and 6 p.m. We hope to see you soon. Thanks.